Okay, so we are being recorded. Um, welcome to the second um, online session for Lead IT. I'm Cameron Say, in case uh, you didn't know uh, who I am, and I'm kind of heading this effort up. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right, if one can, all can. Yeah, one can, all can. Um, <laughs> um, So I'm thinking, yeah, a couple people emailed me about, um, you know, having um, prayer services. Some some churches have their their um, Bible study on Tuesday, some on Wednesday, some on, I don't know if any of them have on Thursday, but Tuesday and Wednesday seems to be the most popular day. There's not going to be a time that everybody's going to be able to meet. So that's, that, you know, I'm not, not trying to uh, find a time that everybody can meet. Uh, Wednesday at 8 seems to be the optimal time. They will be recorded. The sessions will be recorded. Uh, they will be on the YouTube site. So, um, um, you know, going forward, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Eastern time is when we're going to be online. <clears throat> um, we have at least one a week. Uh, if, if we need to have more, we will. But for right now, um, we'll have one, one a week. Um, um, and so if you're not talking, please please mute your microphone. I, I can mute, um, mute them all, but I have to keep on and doing it, and people are unmuting themselves. Um, that's, let, let's, let's get that straight. So I, I think everybody in the session now aspires to be a, um, an IT professional. That's my, I'm, that's my the assumption I'm making until uh, I'm informed otherwise. So, you know, IT professional one-on-one -on -one is how to conduct yourself in an online meeting. And I break a lot of rules, so these rules are not, you know, I don't hear all of them, but one of them is when you're not speaking, you, you mute your phone or you mute your, mic, your, your computer. Um, that's, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you mute your microphone on your computer or you mute your phone. Um, that's IT 101 because online meetings are essential in IT today and they're a big mm -hmm. part of what we do in IT. Um, so I set out the agenda, again, it's on the bulletin board uh, for those of you that um, um, didn't get email from me. We'll talk a little bit about the email situation. Um, but I want to welcome you, uh, welcome you guys back, um, those that, that were with us a couple of weeks ago, and welcome the newbies who are, are on for the first time. Uh, we hope this to be a very powerful and effective group um, nationwide. And I'll talk a little bit about, you know, my view on participation going into it. And I, I see a couple of my students on, and they, you know, they know the speech, they know what I'm going to say already. Um, you know, you're only going to get out of this as much as you put in, all right? You're only going to get out of this as much as you put in. And um, we, I realized that there was a delay between the time some of you signed up and we actually got up and going. Uh, and it was a kind of a judgment call of when we, we, you know, when we first contacted you. Um, we had people, part of our team said, um, we want to um, wait until we have more things in place. And my thinking was, well, let's go ahead and find out where the people are now so we understand the kind of numbers that we're dealing with. Um, and then just hopefully we can keep them um, engaged until we actually have some activities for them. Um, but I understand that, that there's going to be, going to take a minute for us to get up and running, at least a few weeks. I hope it's not going to take us more than a month for, for pe people to get engaged. But at present, I'm not real impressed with, with what I'm seeing in terms of activity. I just got to be candid. I'm not really impressed. You have an abundance of tools out there. I can see every view of the, of the YouTube channel. Uh, I can see every hit on the website. I can see every access to the bulletin board. Um, and it's, it's underwhelming, to say the least. So I, I, I get that. I understand. But um, sorry, I got to go to the got to go to the um, the um, new, new all function. Where's the new all? Yeah, new all. So again, those of you, you know, sometimes I, I participate in online meetings a lot, and I sometimes I you know walk away from my computer so I don't hear what's going on. But those of you that can hear me, please, if you're not talking, um, please mute your microphone. I can I can mute all, but I have to go to the panel. I got to click mute all, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's annoying. 
but um, back to the conversation and, and, and we're going to have to establish kind of a protocol so we can be productive. We only have a limited amount of time together. Everybody's busy. I'm, I'm as busy as anybody you want to meet. And um, we're going to have to uh, establish protocol and adhere to those protocols. And one of those protocols is if you're not talking, you your mic. And I'm going to say that again, ad nauseum, until, you know, I don't need to say it anymore. Um, but back to particip participation. You're, you're not going to get anything out of this program unless you put something into it. And we were, we were besieged by emails asking us, when are we going to get started? When are we going to get started? And now, you have steps now that you can take. And I'm adding content every day. Today, I, I also put up on uh, the Cisco um, CCNA um, videos, which are, which are excellent. Um, and um, at, when we go through the tools, we'll, we'll see those. But um, we um, uh, have to, we really have to um, uh, get engaged. And, um, you know, industry expecting us to generate big numbers. And we've had big turnouts at our events. We've had hundreds of people at our, our events. We've got close to 400 people in our database. But I have 30 people online. So, I, mean, I, I know it's going to take a minute. You know, but, but tell your folks if they want, if they want anything out of this. Because we have, we have some jobs right now for people to, to apply for. Right now. Apprenticeships. Right now. At least one. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll share that with you when we talk about the jobs. There's a, a job section. Uh, that we're going to cover. Um, but again, uh, I want to encourage you to, if you're not, if you haven't done W3 schools, start doing W3 schools. If you don't know anything about programming, do W3 schools. Um, look at the, the Master the Mainframe videos. Uh, get engaged in Master the Mainframe. If you are not engaging in Master the Mainframe video, you might as well get offline now because there's no point in doing this. If you, you know, Master the Mainframe is really ground zero for what we're trying to do for both mainframe people and non-mainframe people. At least registering and getting the t-shirt, um, that's ground zero. And so if you're not willing to do that, there's no point you wasting your time. There's, there's no point, right? I mean, uh, no, none of us has time to waste. So, you know, if you're not gonna do the things that you need to do to prepare yourself, because these jobs pay very well, as I said in, in the last video, we have people in my program starting out $90,000 a year, 92 k per year, right? And um, I'm, I'm not seeing an offer under 80 this year yet. That's pretty good money today. That's pretty good money for, you know, people that are, that are just entering an industry. Um, I don't know any other industries that start you out at that high unless it's medicine. Um, um, but at any rate, um, so um, I see a couple of um, telephones on here. One, I know that's Greensboro. Not on one is California. Is that 901? Is that Kathy Birchfield? Is Kathy Birchfield on the line? Must not be her. Um, so let me see. Is Crystal Jennings on the line? I wanted a couple of our my, my colleagues who are um, um, agreed to get on. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Is that is that Karen Karen Jackson on the line? I see Karen up there, but I don't I don't know which Karen is. We have several Karens. Maybe Karen Bernard. Yeah, it's me, Karen Bernard. Oh, well, good, Karen. So so yeah. Um I have an, on the agenda, you know, comments from fellow instructors. So you certainly qualify for that. Uh let me introduce you guys to Karen Bernard. Uh she's a principal um and owner of uh, a firm called Mentor Services, uh, who generate um content for us. Um, they are very experienced trainers in the IT space, and um, you know they've had some um, um, material that she's developed. And I, I have that material in hand. I'll be sharing it with you as time goes on. So I'll turn it over to Karen for a few minutes and let her um, um, introduce herself and um, or whatever other comments or observations she'd like to make. Karen. Thanks, Cam. Um, I really didn't have anything prepared. My okay. two okay. my two colleagues, Mike Myers and Lindsay Edwards. I don't Lindsay can't make it on the call, and uh, I don't see Mike here. Um, they are really the the authors of the material that we've created for Lead IT, um, which we've started creating. So um, I'm happy to answer any any questions that anyone might have, but our our company basically does 
the course development, and we can do course delivery as well. Hey, um, Karen, thank you. I've been knowing Karen for a long time, and um, you know, she has been a, a valuable help to me um, as an academic and to my department in terms of, of support, technical support, and um, um, kind of strategic support um, she's provided. And, and her company was a major subcontractor of um, the lead IT project. So um, yeah, glad Karen's on. And um, Lindsay was on last week. You heard the gentleman with the Australian uh, accent. And um, I didn't, I, it was an oversight on my part because I didn't have a, I didn't have a printed agenda. Uh, I was just kind of winging it, which you shouldn't do when you have people who are spending their time uh, to come share with you. Um, you should be organized. Uh, but so Lindsay didn't have a, a chance to speak, but next time he's on with us, I certainly will let him introduce himself to all of us. Um, Lindsay's an interesting guy. He's got uh, 30 plus years of experience in the mainframe field. And um, you're not gonna meet many people that know more about this, this technology he does. All right, I'm going down the agenda. Um, so let's talk about the tools. Let's talk about the tools. So let's start with the website. I'm gonna share the screen. And I think you can see my screen now. It's a little information about our student placement. Very proud of our student placement. Um, of the 16 students in my mainframe class, everybody's got jobs but two. So, and that's typical, right? And I've got 30 in the class for the spring, and I expect uh, the same type of um, percentage in terms of um, employment. So let's go to the website. So I don't know if you've seen this or not, but the website is leadITjobs.org. Now, as I said, I'm, I'm the, the sole system support for this. So I have to manage the website, the um, Moodle site, um, um, the lead, the uh, lead IT uh, YouTube portal. I'm doing the master the mainframe videos. So all that stuff takes time. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, the website um, up to speed as far as I, fast as I can but at least it has the basics on, on it now in terms of, of who we are and what we do. Um, and these four students on the, on the um, cover are, are students of mine. Jacinta Bailey's on the far left. Next to her is um, Bria Richardson. Next to him, next to her is Akeem Brooks. And next to them is uh, Sakani, uh, Sakani Hill. And if you were on last time, you know, I was very proud to say all four of them have multiple job offers. So they, they have their pick. I think Sakani has four, you know, companies and, and he gets, you know, um, offers every day. He's interviewed with a bunch of companies and, and um, they, are, they all um, have at least three job offers. And that's a good place to be when you're 21, 22 years old. And these jobs all pay good money, um, right? So this is the website. So what I'm gonna do is, and I really don't wanna duplicate effort, so I gotta figure out one place to put stuff. But right now, I'm putting a lot of stuff in the new section of the Lead IT site. And so here's the information and um, a link for people who, if you give the website to somebody and they want to get on the mailing list, uh, the email list, uh, they just send me an email. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm finishing the code on, um, finishing the code for um, um, the um, sign up, right? That's going to be here. Um, until then, uh, I just have to put them in manually, but um, I have to write, you know, PHP code. I mean, there are there are forms that you can use, but for what I want to do, the best way to do it is just to have a database connected to the website and just have a central repository for the data. So I have to write the PHP code um, for it, and that takes time. Now, I do have a colleague of mine, uh, Gina Bullock from North Carolina a and I'm an a and uh, I'm on a and faculty, by the way. For those of you that don't know, it, my, hence my shirt. Um, and he's a wonderful place. I encourage all of you to, to, to um, um, well, you know, some of us are not pursuing degrees, that's fine. But if you're looking for a place, good place to go to school, AT is an excellent university to attend. Uh, I don't think anybody that has graduated from AT has, been, has regretted that choice. Um, I will be looking at my phone from time to time. Um, because people are texting me about, you know, difficulties they have getting in. Um, this lady is. 
Yeah, okay, so um, she's got some connection issues and um, she's trying to get on. Um, and I, I've got to, you know, let people know what's going on. So yeah, consider a and at the university. Um, that's the sign up. Now, you know, there have been some problems with the email because I know a lot of you um, registered at, at the, 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 the former Lead IT website, um, the portal the, that we paid for. That site's been taken down because the funding um, for it stopped. Um, but some of the emails were keyed in incorrectly and I got, I'm getting a bunch of bounce backs. So the only way to, to clarify that is to um, enable you to just redo it over. Um, I would, um, and what I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is send out a list of folks that I have in the database, right? And if you see your name on there, and there was this thing that people didn't want me to um, publish their email, but you know, your email should be a, a public thing, really. I mean. One, at least one email. You should, you know, you should have private emails, but there should be an email. I mean, you guys are IT professionals. Your email should be um, public knowledge. At least, at least your professional email should be public knowledge. But that's okay. I mean, if, if they want me to, part of this is, is, to, is to teach you how to walk and talk and think like an IT professional. So I understand that um, um, you know, people may be uncomfortable with the email being out there, and that's fine. So I'm not going to um, um, put the emails out there. But what I'm going to do is um, put the names, right? And so if you see your name on the list and then you're not getting an email from me, you know that something's wrong with your email. You can let me know. And I can try to fix it. Um, um, all right, so that's the, that's the website. Okay. And if, if any of you are curious, I'm building it with a tool called Amaya. Um, it's a web editor. And um, you might want to check Amaya out to do web stuff. Um, I want everybody to at least be proficient with HTML. So the W3 school site that we looked at uh, last week, and then we'll take another look at it uh, today also. Um, it's great to teach you, you know, HTML, PHP, JavaScript. JavaScript's a really powerful language. That's not Java. I want you guys to understand. JavaScript and Java are two different languages, uh, and they do two, two different things. But um, JavaScript is very important in the web today, uh, much more important than it used to be. Uh, it used to be a tool for just uh, doing look and feel stuff, um, managing the appearance of a website. Now JavaScript is um, is moved into doing back end stuff and touching data um, behind the browser, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we look at that. Um, okay, anything else about the website? I want to. Uh, I don't think so. But um, just lead it jobs, lead it jobs .org. So if anybody's trying to get in contact with the program and wants to wants to participate and uh, wants to know how this is where it starts. Um, another thing, another very important tool is um, the Lead IT Forum, okay? So I, I built a forum, and um, a forum built in um, PHP, which is a language that, that I want everybody to learn. Um, and even PHP or Python, either one, but one of, those, one of those languages you need to learn, you need to become proficient in a, a computer language. And that, that proficiency is not going to come overnight. You start from understanding the basics of programming languages, period, which W3 schools can help you with. And we'll have some online um, online stuff. Um, but yeah, I want you to, to sign up, and people don't seem to have a problem signing up. Um, another thing, here's another thing. <clears throat> you know, a lot of us, are, a lot of people that are involved in this program are young. They're in the 20-something range. And um, I work with 20-somethings for a living, so I'm, I'm comfortable with 20-somethings. But we're going to have to learn how to start conducting ourselves in a professional manner, okay? So one thing, I want everybody to, to create a professional email, preferably on Gmail, because that makes life a lot easier. A professional email that has your first name and either an underscore dot your last name. Now, if your name's John Smith, there are going to be a lot of John Smiths already. So you might have to put a, a number after it, right? Um, like 2324, whatever the number is you need to put behind it. But you need some way, you need an email that people can look at that email and know who you are. Okay? That is how you conduct yourself as an IT professional. And that's not, that might not be the one you send to your grandma or you send to your boo or you send to your boys or your girls. That's fine. That's fine. But you need a professional presence online. Another thing I want everybody to do, and I'll list these things in, in the bulletin board, 
is um, I want everybody to have a LinkedIn um, presence. I know all of you have Facebook presence, right? But but guess what? Facebook is a toy. It's not a professional tool, right? Well, it's not quite true, but Facebook is a professional tool, but um, it's not a a mature. It's not it's not a, it's not what corporations use um, or professionals use to communicate information about themselves um, as individuals. Um, they do as firms in, on Facebook, but not as individuals. Um, LinkedIn is. So that's at LinkedIn.com. One word, LinkedIn.com. So um, get a LinkedIn presence. Um, I want everybody to craft a professional resume, right? Because the jobs that I'm, I'm talking about tonight, that we're going to be going through resumes. And well, I'm going to have candidates send me their resume, and we're going to interview you. Based on the resumes, we're going to have some interviews online. And we're going to select 10 names to move forward to the company, right? And so if you don't have a resume, <laughs> you can't send me one if you don't have a resume. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting everyone in the minds. And I know now some of you already know this. Some of you are working, right? Some of you have been out here. I, I, I get emails from you guys. Some of you guys are already uh, IT professionals, so you know this stuff. And so that that comment was not for you. But, um, you know, this program is also for the absolute novices, the people who don't know a whole lot about IT or don't know a lot about IT careers, and, and they think an IT career might be of interest to them. Uh, so we're going to um, um, help you along with that. So that's the bulletin board, and I have topics in here. Now, you know, I used to do this stuff all the time, but I haven't done it for years. I've been doing other things. So I'm, I'm a little rusty in managing these tools. But I don't know that this is the best way to, to have it in terms of the nesting of it. Uh, but this is the way it is now. Now, I'm, and I'm, I'm open for suggestions. But one of the things I want you to do is introduce yourself to the community. And we need to know um, IT is a team sport. And, uh, yeah, we have a couple more people on. So we have two more people since, uh, since I looked at it a little while ago. That's good. IT is a team sport, right? You're never going to work in isolation in IT, never. And I think Karen Bernard on, online will, will agree with that, that, that you're never going to work in isolation. You're always going to have to work collaboratively. So I want us to form a powerful community. The only way people are going to take us seriously is, is if they feel our presence, okay? Once they feel our presence, once they, once they understand, once, once company X knows who lead IT is and know the level of, of, of performance that we are um, seeking, uh, then they'll begin to take us very seriously and we'll have more and more companies signing up. Um, right now, you know, most of the companies that we're going to work with are going to be mainframe companies. Um, but there are going to be some exceptions. Like Cisco has already had has an apprenticeship program. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but, you know, some things are just essential. A couple of things. Master the mainframe. To, to, to be a part of Lead IT, master the mainframe is absolutely essential. Okay. If you're not participating in master the mainframe, you're not participating in, in Lead IT. And I really don't have time to spend with you. If you're not willing to spend the time to get, uh, uh, get a, a, an ID um, from IBM to start master the mainframe, no matter how far you get, if, you don't, if you're not motivated enough to do that, then I, I'm not, this is really, I can't help you. Right? There's no magic to this. This is about work. This is about commitment. This is about setting priorities. Right? This is about setting priorities. And I realize everybody's busy. Many of you have already have jobs. Many of you have families. I get that. And so, you know, nothing comes before family. But, you know, if you want to make some more money, if you're dissatisfied with the money you're making, this stuff can put money in your pocket. Now, IT is not for everybody. And I would never try to convince somebody to get into IT if they don't like it, they don't find IT interesting, right? But um, I want to make sure that you understand that we expect you to be to become engaged. Okay, so that is the bulletin board. I want everybody to sign up for the bulletin board and at least you know introduce yourself to the community where you are. Um, that's it. Not a lot of verbiage, right? But the, if you want to share some things with the group, so the note about you, you know, you got two co two dogs and a cat or whatever, or red your favorite color. That's fine. Uh, but at least your name and uh, where you're located, city and state, okay? So we know who we're dealing with. Um, that's that. Now, uh, the next one is um, the, um, the Lead IT Moodle site. So, and this probably is the site that I've spent the least amount of time with, but it's going to be a major tool that we use because um, this is probably where we're going to put our assessment 
and uh, when we try to find out what you know, um, et cetera. Um, so um, now, as I said, I'm rusty with the tools. There is a way for you to self-enroll in this, and I'm trying to find that way. And I thought I had the self-enrollment turned on, um, but apparently I don't. I tried it as another user. And um, so right now, just send me an email that you want to get on the Moodle site, and um, you know I'll, 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 I'll set it up for you. But um, in the long run, I mean, I, I don't have time to set up 300 people. So in the long run, we're going to have to allow people to self-register. Um, that is that. Let me see if I wrote down. I've got some notes for myself here. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, I talked about professional emails. Um, okay. Um, oh, the W3 school site. So, so this is this is um, on oh, the YouTube site too. Yeah. So this is master mainframe. There's not a lot up here yet, but there will be. Uh, there will be. And again, I'm an army of one, so I have to. Um, uh, I have to. Um, um, you know, try to spread my, my the time I spend on this stuff around. Um, and that location is leadityjobs.org/education. I'm going to try to do everything based. Lead IT orgs. I mean, leadityjobs.org slash and then something. For the forum, it's leadityjobs.org slash forum. Okay, um, that's that. Um, um, yeah, people, people, you guys are responding. I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, the YouTube site. Okay, so now there's a Lead IT YouTube site, and I want you to subscribe to it, and um, as you can see, uh, I've only got four subscriptions to it, right? Now, the reason I want you to subscribe is, no, I'm not trying to get any information from you or anything, but it's just that when I post another video, you'll get a notice about it. And I see I have more people. I have two YouTube sites. I've got my own personal channel here. Let me see if I can switch to mine. Uh, hmm, interesting. So I've got a Cameron Say channel. Now I see that there are a lot more people on the Cameron Say channel in terms of views. But so these are where the Master the Mainframe Help videos are. And I've got six of them done. And I've done um, challenge seven. Uh, so, but I haven't made a video for it. Um, so this is where they are. Hmm. I don't know why, why I can't get back to the Cameron Say channel. Uh, anyway, um, I'm seeing more views on the Cameron Say channel than I am here. Now, the benefit of the Lead IT channel is that there are only Lead IT materials on there. Uh, on the Cameron Say channel, there are other, they're from other projects that I had um, that may or may not pertain to you helping you get a job. But um, and that's up to you. I mean, that's, that's fine. You can subscribe to both of them or neither of them, um, but this is a good way for you to um, stay abreast of what we're doing. Every video I have, I'm going to post to um, the Lead IT, the Lead IT YouTube channel. Um, W3 Schools, um, we, we, we talked about W3 Schools last time, and I'm going to, it bears repeating. Um, I want you to start with HTML. If you already know HTML, that's fine. Great. Um, you know, we've got some seasoned veterans on here. Um, I know because you know, I've seen some of your resumes, but we have some beginners too. And if you don't know HTML, at least learn the basics of HTML. Um, then I would move to JavaScript. And I don't know about jQuery. Um, I, I mean, you can just go right down the line. But I definitely want you to do JavaScript. If you don't do any other language on here in this section, at least do JavaScript. And then do SQL is a is essential. SQL stands for a structured query language, structured query language, and is the way you talk to a relational database. Essential for an IT person to, to know the basics of uh, SQL. And PHP is a really nice little scripting language um, to help you do a lot of stuff um, over the web. Um, yeah, it's really nice language and it's pretty easy to learn. 
So that's our W3 school. Um, so I don't think I have any other tools that I want to share with you. Oh, I know on the bulletin board, um, I think in the tool section, and there may be a better place for this, but here I have like the W3 school site. Um, I have and some of the stuff is in on the website too, on the news. Um, yeah, here it is. So there's some material here for C program. Now that's this is a little ambitious, but if you're looking for something to do, I mean the things, the thing that 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 you have been pinging myself and Mr. Thompson, Mr. John Thompson, about uh, incessantly is what do we do? When do we do stuff? So this is something. I mean, if, you, if you're bored and you want to do, this is a series of um, C programming slides that go from soup to nuts, from absolute beginner, what is a computer, right? And it walks you through hexadecimal, it walks you through binary, which are two things that you really have to become, come up to speed with. Um, and so you can download those and zip them. Uh, I would post them, but it's just so, so many slides that uh, there's really, really nowhere for me to put them comfortably. I may eventually put them on Moodle, but for right now, you can just download the, the entire zip file, unzip them. And um, you know, put them somewhere in your computer and, and start going through there. Those, and I will put some tools up for you to, to um, you know, when you want to start writing C code. Um, C is a really good language um, to, to learn, um, and um, it makes you powerful. This is all about power. It's all about self empowerment, right? It's what this is about. Uh, I'm showing you how to never ever have to worry about a job again, right? Um, you know, one company lay you off. You just go across the street because everybody does the same thing. So that's what this is about. This is about community and individual and community empowerment. Okay. Um, next is about, um, I want to leave plenty of time at the end for Q&A. Um, funding, right? So I wanted to give you guys an update on funding. And um, I got another text in, so let's see. Okay, that wasn't okay. Nobody seems to have you have any problems. Um, so yeah, I had a conversation yesterday with I've had several interesting conversations this week about this project. Several. Um, one of them yesterday was with the state of North Carolina's uh, head of the um, apprenticeship program in the state of North Carolina, a woman by the name of Nancy uh, Costellos. Right. Very nice woman, very, very knowledgeable woman about apprenticeship space. And um, we were talking about, um, in particular, the Cisco apprenticeship program. So Cisco has an apprenticeship program that they started at North Carolina A&T. And they've actually had a couple of apprentices. I think they have three apprentices that they brought on from um, our department last week. Um, and the way it works is you do, do first two years, first two years you do um, you're an academic at A&T, and um, you're in an academic program, and you're taking courses, um, some network related, some not. Um, and then at the second semester of your sophomore year, um, the courses that you've taken should prepare you to, to pass the CCNA exam, because passing the CCNA exam is essential to, to move forward. And then the last two years, you're a paid Cisco intern. So you do part of your work on the Cisco campus in R RTP. Uh, part of your day is spent at the Cisco Campus RTP, working for the company, and the other half is spent completing your degree. Um, so um, it's working out there. I mean, it's not the, the 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 bachelor's degree model really isn't commensurate with with what they're trying to do, but they're working out the kinks. But the reason I was having the meeting with um, Miss um, Castellos was because Cisco really is trying to increase their numbers of apprentices. I mean, they want 50 a semester, right? <laughs> And there's no way my department's gonna be able to get, get that amount of number. There's a, there are a lot of jobs out here, people, but you gotta you got to have the skills they need, right? You, they, they can't use you if you don't have the right skill set. Um, yeah, they can't use you if you don't have the right skill set. So um, they wanna move this to the community college level. And if, if any of you are on for North Carolina and you're not in, in college, um, what they're trying to do is get companies to sign them on, sign individuals on as apprentices so that there, there's a tuition waiver that North Carolina will give you. So you, you can go to community college for absolutely nothing, right? 
And the, the key to that is to get companies to, to um, bring you on as a paid apprentice while you're in school. And that's, you know, companies are not, not they're, they're going to be hesitant to do that. There's a good business case you can make for them doing that, but, you know, you have to um, reach a critical mass. And I, I can tell you, right, really what's going to help is for us to show that we have active participation, right? What I'm showing right now, if I showed it to a company, they're like, well, wait a minute, you don't have anybody participate, right? So you tell us you're going to get all these people. So why should we support a program that, that nobody's participating? Good question. That's a question I would ask. I would ask the same question. Um, so your your participation is very important. Um, yeah. um, and and how that pertains to funding is that there is money that's going to be made available to the state first, and so we're trying to in, in, ingratiate ourselves with um, Ms. Costellos and, and to demonstrate to her that we're we're effective, um, and we've got we've got viewers, we've got people that are we've got participation, right? Again, that's why participation is important. Um, and then, you know, the dollars will follow. I mean, there's, I think I shared this, this, this number with you guys a couple of weeks ago. There's $200 million that the, that the federal government has sitting in a pot somewhere to apply toward apprenticeships. And they just don't have enough people to, that, that are doing what we're doing. That's why to me, it didn't really make sense for us to stop our funding because we were doing what, it, what, it, what they said they wanted done, right? And what they still say they want done. And, you know, my question was, wait a minute, we were doing, we, we, we received no feedback that um, we were not doing a good job. Matter of fact, you know, all the feedback we got was, you guys are doing a great job. Um, and my understanding is we got uh, the contract stopped because people didn't like the idea of equity, equity um, contractors who were focusing on specific populations. But I focus on whoever, whoever comes to me, I work with you, right? I work with you. Um, I don't care if you got three eyes and um, a split lip. If you want to do IT and you want to put forth the work, I'm going to work with you. I'm, I don't exclude anyone from this program. But we focus on the communities we focus on because those, those communities have been left out. And you, you, to prove that, all you have to do is go to any tech meeting. Go to any, any tech conference. I went to Android. I went to, and this is, this is, I went to Android in San Francisco in November of 2014, I did not see one African-American there the entire week I was there. Not one. Only time I saw African-Americans at the conference was at the last day, NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers, they had um, a regional meeting that started that Friday evening. And so some of the students showed up. But then to get them to, to, get them to come to some of the sessions, there was a session right across from where the, the NSBE um, registration table was. The Nesby registration table was in this lobby, and right across from there was a, a, a session where a guy was driving a helicopter with his brain, right? You know, the same technology as a CAT scan. And so when he would think up, the, ele the, the helicopter would go up, and we would think down, and go down, et cetera. I thought it was fascinating, right? Um, and I, was, I went to the student, I said, you guys really need to come in here and see this. And I couldn't get anybody to come in. And I didn't, these are engineers. These are, these are student engineers, and I can't get them to see something, some dazzling technology. So, you know, a lot of times certain communities are their own worst enemy in terms of their unwillingness to engage this stuff. And, I, you know, I don't have a cure for that. I know it's not a problem in a and I never have any problem getting kids in my mainframe class. You're not kids. I mean, you know, I've had 50-year-olds in my mainframe class. So now all kids. I've never had a problem getting students in my mainframe class at A&T. Um, because A&T is a special place. But we're trying to make, we're trying to, to, to broaden the A&T message to the community at large now. You don't have to be pursuing a degree to do technology. Bill Gates still does not have a college degree. Stephen Jobs died without a college degree, right? Both of them did very well, very well in technology. And um, so, um, you know, want to get you to go and engage. Um, that's about funding. So funding's going to come. I mean, I'm, I'm treading water now. You know, it's, it's kind of rough now because I'm doing everything with no money, but, um, or little money. I have some from other projects, but, um, you know, money's going to come. I mean, I, that's always been my, my um, belief. Um, let's talk a little, a little bit about jobs. Now, we have one job that, that's ready to go right now, right? Uh, they want to um, um, bring somebody on to do some Linux, Unix work. 
And so I'll, I'll post the, the job. And again, I'm not going to be emailing you guys this stuff. I'm just going to put it on the bulletin board. And you got to go to the bulletin board and see it. And it'll be in, in, in you know, in the, um, probably stuff like that will be in the general comments area. Or I may, I may have a job, I may have a um, one for, for jobs. So you have to go through the whole, the whole bulletin board to find out. And I don't know if it's right now, if it's sending you uh, an email every time I push, post something new. If that's not turned on, I will try to turn that post on. So when I make another posting to the bulletin board, you will get, uh, you'll get email. Um, but um, it's for Linux, Unix, and um, they're willing to, you know, um, on, the, on the job description it says three years um, uh, experience preferred. But the, the VP, um, see, he's a good friend of mine, senior VP, who's over two thirds of IT at bb &T. He says for an apprentice, they want this to be an apprentice. And they said for apprentices, they will waive the three year requirement. And nowhere on there does it say you have to have a college degree, right? Not college degree is not required for this. I would imagine um, the full pay for this job is at least 70K a year. I don't, I don't know, maybe it may be under that because you know these jobs, these, these types of jobs don't pay as well as mainframe, but they pay, they pay pretty decent. So I would imagine at least 65. I, I don't know what the salary is, but I'm, I would I'd be surprised if it was under 65. But uh, at any rate, um, I'm gonna post that information and then get start getting resumes about it. And that job's ready to go now. Now that's one job. Now now he's got 12 to 15 that are gonna be coming on in um, start over the first of the year. They've got some kind of administrative stuff to, to take care of to make sure that everything for the apprenticeship or uh, the administratively is in line. Uh, so he's got another 12 to 15 that are going to be um, from the January to May time frame. And then they've got 50 that they're going to try to place, um, you know, next summer, um, starting from the May to, let's say, the June to uh, December time frame. And then after that, they're trying to bring, you know, a lot of jobs um, from offshore back domestic for you know, a variety of business reasons. Um, but... Um, they're going to be, we're talking about hundreds of jobs. So it's going to take a minute, but the, but the floodgates are going to open, right? Floodgates are going to open for these jobs. And um, I want you guys to be ready. That's why it's real important that you start preparing yourselves now and you get engaged. Uh, that's bb and I told you about Cisco. I had another interesting conversation today with a gentleman by the name of Lonnie Harris, longtime Cisco veteran, currently on loan uh, to, to a and at, on, at Cisco's expense uh, to teach um, networking, to, 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 yeah, to teach networking, I don't know, any other way to put it. Now, he got about a half million dollars from the Dean of the College of Edu Engineering at A&T to purchase what he calls a um, um, cyber range, right? So a cyber range, because so Cisco is heavy into cybersecurity. And this is basically a sandbox for cyber stuff. And, um, you know, we still need about another 500,000 to that, which he doesn't have uh, for the rest of the equipment. But this is, and this is, this is training that you can go, there's going to be a cert certification involved too. Now it's not a current Cisco certification. They have to create a new one, but they're going to, and it'll probably be an A&T certification. That's, you know, it'll be from A&T, but it'll be approved by Cisco um, where you get a uh, certification in cybersecurity. And that's training that you can do remotely. Um, I'm, I'm checking the chat to see if uh, yeah. So I, I have some questions um in the chat that I'll that I'll, I'll get to make sure. I get. So post your questions to the chat, and we'll go to we'll go through the questions from the chat uh, during the Q and A. All right. So uh, so feel free to to post them. I'll, I'll address all of them, uh, time permitting. Um. So that's Cisco. So that's gonna that's that's gonna come. You know, I mean, I think we're gonna get the money. Um, that should be ready sometime this spring, but that's, that's training that you can, and the training will be conducted by Cisco uh, in, in conjunction with A&T. And it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to pay, pay, have to pay anything for it, right? Um, it's good stuff. And so you, you can work toward a certification in cybersecurity. Um, um, I put up the uh, CCNA uh, link on the um, bulletin board. You can see that here on the bulletin board, um, the forum rather. And so that's so you can prepare yourself for those because all of our all of our jobs are not probably most of our jobs are going to be mainframe jobs, but all of them won't be. But um, um, CCNA is a great thing to do. Two things that you want to. Well, 
there's actually more than two. But two things you definitely want to do is, is develop some familiarity with networking, which the Cisco video I've seen, I've, I've reviewed some of them, and they are excellent for beginners, right? In terms of this is a network. And the guy starts out with like a little analogy of walking down a road and, and the road being a network and carrying the message from the king. And it, it's very colorful um, uh, metaphors that he uses. Um, so CCNA is one of them. And then get, get your programming skills in order. And I'm not talking about being a leading edge programmer. And look here, if you think you can't learn to write code, then you probably need to just move on, um, log off right now, and just completely forget about lead IT. Because we're not trying to force you to be high-end programmers, but programming is an essential part of IT today. You've got to know how to write code. Yeah, I've got yeah, sure code. And you can, right? That's the main thing. It's something that you can do. The basics of programming are pretty straightforward. Right. Like anything else, it has this level of complexity down the road, but the fundamentals are the fundamentals. Right. So you can do that. Uh, that's Cisco. Um, talk about IBM a little bit. I'm looking at my watch, uh, making sure that I don't run out of time. Um, so IBM is has moved forward with the um, mainframe standards, and um, I don't know why they hadn't been approved by DOL, but IBM is going to be starting that to have um, their customers request mainframe interns come first of the year. So uh, master mainframe is a good prep for that. Um, so I don't run out of time. I'm going to go ahead and get, and get to the, the, the chat questions. Um, yeah, so Karen had to drop off. Let me go to the top of it. Um, well, I mean, is everybody clear where the videos are, right? on the YouTube channel, right? Every video that we have is gonna be on the YouTube channel. So I want everybody to know that. Every video we have is gonna be on the YouTube channel. Right, if, if I have a video for this program, I'm gonna upload it to the YouTube channel, the Lead IT YouTube channel. So that's where that's the answer to that question. Um, no, there's not a fee, again. Um, and see, <laughs> put yourself in my position. I'm answering questions that have been answered somewhere else, right? If, if you had, were accessing the tools, if you were looking at the videos, if you were, you know, doing the things that you need to do to be engaged with, these would not be questions, right? No, there's not a fee, right? Not a fee. Um, there's nothing we're doing that, that has a fee um, right now. And I can't promise that's going to be forever, but for right now. Um, okay, so somebody's having problems with the um, forum. So I'll address those and um, provide the phone number. So yeah. Uh, question is, do, do employers prefer education or certifications? Um, let me tell you what employers prefer. Employers prefer you knowing how to do something, okay? No matter how you came about doing it, right? Whether you got a degree, five degrees, thousand certifications. Degrees and certifications are okay as far as they go. All things being equal, it's better to have certifications and degrees than not to have them. But knowing how to do stuff trumps everything, right? Uh, you know, there can be a student that, that, that applies for a job with a 4.0 GPA, right, from, from Georgia Tech or MIT. And if they need somebody to do something and you know how to do that thing, they're going to hire you, right? Interview well, soft skills. There's a whole lot of this whole soft skills component to this that we we will go into at some other point in time. Um, so, yeah, now get educated. If you, if you, I'm I'm an educator, so if I don't have students, I don't have a job. I'm never going to dissuade anybody from pursuing education. I'm just saying today, understand the limits of that education because what's been happening is. Um, Academic departments have been doing kind of their thing, and industry has been doing this thing, and the two have not been overlapping a whole lot. So as, you know, I was talking with Lonnie today, and I was explaining to him the way higher ed works, and he did Lonnie Harris, a Cisco engineer, and he had no idea. You know, they industry just assumed we're doing what they need us to do. Well, to a large extent, we're not doing what they need us to do. So, so, so companies really need you to know what they need and, and, and hopefully 
No, I know for a fact because I asked them. I ask companies all day, like today, Alani's a hiring manager. He hires people. And I ask them all the time, what, what are folks speaking about? Right. So that's what I'm sharing with you. That's why I'm saying your engagement and your participation is, is far more important than you're getting a certification. Now, I'm not dissuading you from getting certification, but if you're spending, um, if, if you think the certification is going to allow you to avoid having to go in there and learn the basics of, of networking, that's, that's, that's not true. I mean, you can you can score, make a perfect score on a certification, but the company, these, these companies are not stupid. They know just because you have that per, per certification doesn't mean you know how to do what that certification says you know how to do. It doesn't mean that. And while you certainly can get an interview with, with, um, with certifications, same with a degree, they will know. It won't take them very long to find out whether or not you know how to do anything. Okay. So um, answer that question. Um, you recommend books on the following HTML, JavaScript? No, yeah, I could recommend, yeah, no, but I won't recommend a book. There's too much stuff online for you to have to, I don't, I don't buy tech, and I, I've got a library, I've got shelves of textbooks, walls of textbooks, right? Walls of textbooks, right? I, I don't buy them anymore. There's no need. There's YouTube, there's the internet. So start with the W3 school site, and once you know everything, that site has to offer once you're clear and it, 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 and you you just re, just repetition and you you're doing everything for the second or third time. Let me know and I can I can start send you to some advanced stuff. But a good place to start with programming is um, the W three school site. Okay, that's that's a good place to start. And then when you get done with that, you can look at those C um, um, slides that I sent you um, that that I want you to unzip. And um, you're going to need a tool, and I think the tool is called, um, I forget what it's called, but there's a little compiler that's free that um, they use in the, in the classes to write C code. So when you want that, um, as a matter of fact, I may post a link to that for the people that are ambitious. Um, any way to get help with downloading correct items needed in order to complete master the mainframe? Now, I'm not really clear what that question is, um, not really clear what that question is. Uh, maybe you could rephrase it, whoever sent that question. Uh, G. Blunt, yeah, maybe G. Blunt could rephrase that question or, or maybe can come on a, come on voice and, and ask it. Uh, I'm not really clear about downloading correct items. I mean, you from the IBM site, you should be able to download everything you need, download your master mainframe. So in terms of uh, the correct items, I'm not really clear about that. So I'll, I'll wait, time permitting, I'll wait for some clarification on that question. Day-to-day um, -day mainframe job like, yeah, see, let, let's dispel this myth. Let's dispel this myth right now. Okay. Um, part of your education is me telling you what, what really is. Because a lot of people, you, you guys have ideas about what IT is like without really knowing anything about IT. So let's talk about programming for a minute. So people think that programmers programmers sit in front of screens all the time. Well maybe one day that maybe at one point in time maybe that was true. I don't know, right? But now they are using a process called agile that I would say the time ratio spent between writing code to talking about the code and having having um, um, concert with your um, colleagues, your team members, because everything is done in teams. Everything is done in teams, right? In, in IT, everything is done in teams. And so I would say it's at least four to one, or three to one, or four to one, or even five to one in terms of the, the, the unit of time you spend writing code and the unit of time you spend talking about what you're going to do, strategizing, about, talking to your colleagues. So, so, so that's about programming, period. That's about programming. Now, his, his question wasn't about programming jobs per se, about mainframe jobs, but it says all programming. Well, even all programming jobs, even a programming job is not all programming, right? I want to be clear about that. I want to be clear about that so you guys understand what it is you're going to do. Most of your time in IT is going to be spent thinking because you are a problem solver. Unless you're doing something very rudimentary in grunt work, which there's no, no real, real pay in grunt work, uh, you're going to spend, be, be spent thinking about things, talking about things, right? Um, solving problems. 
Um, so mainframe jobs, there's no like typical day in the life of mainframe jobs. You take you take two DBAs, right? Database administrators. Um, it, it depends on the company. I mean, if they're working at different companies, if they may be doing two completely different things, right? So one of the things, um, and each job is different. There's in, in mainframe, there's networking, there's database, there's coding, um, there's project management, there's all the things there are in IT at large. Mainframe is just, let's understand what mainframe is. Mainframe is just an architecture, right? It's just a platform. It's like Windows, I think you guys understand it, that, that Mac and PCs do the same thing. But they're different platforms, right? They're different platforms. They, they, they do the same things in different ways. The way you do something on a PC, you do the same thing on a Mac, but you do it in a different way, different set of keystrokes, et cetera, different icons, et cetera. Um, mainframe is the same way. Only everything on a mainframe is bigger, much, much bigger, and much, much faster, right? That, that's mainframe is, is, is IT stuff um, on steroids. I hate that it, on steroids. Um, phrase because it's horribly cliche but um yeah so uh, there, there's really not a typical it just depends on what you do um system programmer for example let's say system programmer i'll just put one on Scott just to give you an idea of what they do um their job is to keep the system up and running right so they may, may apply patches and, and patches in the mainframe world and patches in the pc world um they may Debug an application if some, something goes wrong, and the the people who wrote the application can't figure out what's going wrong. So the mainframe person will look at something called a dump, that's a an output of um, um, the registers where the where the instructions are held, and it's like a snapshot of the registers, um, and try to discern from that where the problem is. You basically solve problems. You basically solve problems. Um, DBA um, manages the databases, right? Um, that may be everything from writing SQL scripts to doing backups, right? So there's no typical thing to do. I mean, I would I would recommend that you go online and look at your particular job description in the mainframe world, and maybe they can give you um, some typical scenario of what that person does. Um, I will tell you that to me, the best job in IT is that of, of um, infrastructure architect. That's the best, the best job. You know, there's not a better job. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the question came up about um, Cisco cybersecurity is interesting. Now nah, there's really not any more to say about it at this point until we get to get the equipment. It's just that Cisco wants to build a, um, a cybersecurity sandbox at a and and um, have um, training that students can access remotely uh, on that system where they do uh, certain types of um, security um, routines and, and show some, some security scenarios. But I mean, there's really not a lot to say about it now because it's, you know, it's in process, it's not up and running. So um, um, yeah, that's, that's all um, I can say. Uh, I will say this about networking in general. Networking is what everybody wants to do. Okay, everybody wants, not everybody, everybody wants to do cybersecurity now, right? So what does that mean? Uh, there's going to be a lot of folks out there with the same skill set that you have. So, <laughs> and cybersecurity is a good place to be, don't get me wrong. But work with the mainframe, you, you learn more about security than you will on any other platform because the mainframe is inherently secure, right? And so what they're doing now is they're taking what a mainframe does from a security standpoint and trying to replicate that. In, into architectures that weren't created to be inherently secure, right? So, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys more information. I think it's going to be great. I mean, I like Lonnie. Lonnie's a great guy. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, now, I guess I can take a, a few questions from the floor in, in the couple of minutes we have left. Um, it looks like we're right at nine o'clock, so I'll take maybe one question from the floor if anybody has a question. I have a question. Sure. Um, um, you, you mentioned that the, the best job to have was the architect right. job. Um, maybe you explained this already, but briefly, can you just tell me why, out of all of them, you think that's the best one? Sure, I, I'd be glad to. Be glad to. That's, that's a great question. So, yeah, it's easy to, 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 to name something without describing it. 
Um, what an architect does is architect in his head or her head has the entire infrastructure of the organization. It may be a global company. It may be Apple, for example, um, Apple, an Apple IT architect. And that ar architect has in his or her head kind of the entire strategy and philosophy of everything that Apple does from an IT standpoint in their head, right? And they are responsible for designing and maintaining that, uh, that, that architecture. And the more senior you go, right, the more senior, the more you move up the food chain, the bigger piece that you have of that infrastructure, right, um, in right. your head. So, so for example, it is, if you want to be a CTO or a CIO of an organization, sometimes an IT architect is, is, is almost essential, right, for senior management. Um, real hard to get that position without having spent some time as an architect. And it's fun. You know, if you like playing with this stuff the way I do, you like building, you know, you like building these infrastructures. You like deploying the databases, deploying the network. So the architect in, encompasses everything, applications, the network scheme, the databases, every, the, 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 the interfaces, the look and feel of the screens, um, the user deployment, the user interaction. They, they are involved with all of that. So I think that's uh, that's why I think it's a um, good job to have. Um, that, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. I'm driving. So if you can't hear me, it goes in and out. But I can no. hear you. No, I understand. You're coming, you're coming through loud and clear. Uh, I got time for one more. I know we're at the top of the hour, but I, I, I went on a little bit too much. So uh, I can take uh, another question from somebody if they have one. Well, I have one more question if no one else. Absolutely. Jump in there, brother. I mean, this, this is for the hungry people, right? This whole process for the hungry people. You can sit back if you want to. Somebody else is going to grab, going to reach on the table and grab the sandwich. So, so go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead if we Jack. dedicate ourselves to um, mainframe, is this uh, more of a job security? Or is this, uh, I heard you on your last video speak about it being more for global businesses, more like banks. Um, it may be some people consider it a dead technology, but there's it's needed, you know, so more coders aren't going to mainframe anymore and may not know about it. Um, so if we learn these skills, is this a way for us to have job security, and let's say in at least the next five, ten years? Oh no, absolutely. I think that's a great question, James. And 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 that's one of the reasons that I went into this because I was teaching the HBCU, right? And yeah. you know. We needed a niche. We needed something that because all things. Let me let me explain the facts of life. That you may know this, James. Some some folks on the phone. We got some young people on the phone. But they may not know this. All things being equal, student from North Carolina Central go for a job. Student from NC State go for a job. Or student from Duke go go for a job. They can have the same GPA, uh, interview the same, have the right. same um, same credentials, right? Ten times, not, at least nine times out of ten, the job's gonna go to the to the, to the Duke student or the NC State student. Right. Not, and, and not because of any over. Go ahead, James. Go ahead. I've been talking all the time. Go ahead. No, nah, you're right. Uh, so I want to be able to eliminate the no's. So right. that's why I want to know yeah. uh, what we're learning. Since if we're going to be learning this information and we, you guys are already plugged in with the network, then I want to, I want to learn. Exactly. So, yeah, what I was explaining was why I went into this. Uh, we needed a niche. We needed, we needed something that they couldn't say no to, right? If you need somebody to write JCL, I know how to write JCL. The kid from NC State doesn't know how to write JCL. You got to give me the job, I, I, unless you unless you are acting against your own interest. Unless you're acting against your own interest. So yeah, in terms, let's talk about job security. This technology is not going anywhere. Okay, it can't because nobody's going to put the you know the hundred billion dollars of R and D up to to bring up make a competitive product to IBM and with the chance that they will um, overcome IBM's. 55 year head start in the technology. So it's not going to happen. Bank of America is not going to move all of their, their mainframe based business off the platform. Now, people are moving workloads off the mainframe, but it's because it makes business sense to do so. I mean, if you can move up, the mainframe is the most expensive place to run an application that you can run somewhere else. But there's some applications you can't run anywhere else. So, yeah, it's, it's security. And, and, and because uh, this is the only program I know like this in existence. I don't know of another free program that's, that's introducing people to mainframe, right? My students are having no problem getting jobs. They're having to run from employers, right? 
that that tell me to take this off, should I take this off? Um, um, kid got a got a um, an internship. His name is um, uh, uh, Momar Fall. You know, young brother's family from uh, Sierra Leone, you know, some African country. Um, he was born here, but his family from an African country. And a great kid, uh, very sharp. And uh, he got a, an internship at Bank of America, thirty-five bucks an hour this summer. And um, you know, he, he accepted the offer like a couple of weeks ago. And since then, he's had like five other offers, right? For internships, wow. people need this stuff, and nobody's teaching it. So this is the best time to get in, and you know it's the best time to get in because you're going to be able to move up. The people that you're going to be working with are all 50 and 60 years old. They're not going to work forever, so there's going to be gaps in the management. So you you'll have opportunity to move up. Now that's not to say that everybody needs to go into mainframe. I'm not saying that. But that's to answer your question directly, James, about this specific technology. There are other good places in in, 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 in IT to go. Somebody asked about cybersecurity. That's a great place to go. The only thing is, there's, there's, you know, I, you name me a school, and I'm, I'll, I'll tell you, this is a school with a cybersecurity program, right? They're at community college. They're all over. Um, there's a shortage of cybersecurity people now, but it's not going to be for long. So this is a place where uh, you will definitely have, um, and, the, and the kids, you know, my former students, they love this stuff. They love it. Now, I will tell you, many of them have moved to other technologies simply because opportunity arose, but it's not that they didn't like mainframe. It's not that they didn't like mainframe. Another thing I didn't talk about this tonight, we'll talk about this next week. We, we need to talk about Linux. We need to get serious about Linux. Because if you if you put together mainframe and Linux, then you you, you basically write your own ticket. Um, but anyway, I don't want to keep people over too much. Um, I've enjoyed you guys. We'll be on same time, uh, same channel next week. Um, and uh, send me emails. And I've enjoyed it. Sorry about uh, you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, um, hi. Um, I'm Jen from um, Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. And I sent you an email because I had tried to um, get on a forum like when it first was um, started up, mm -hmm. and I'm still not on there. All right. Try to get, what, 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 what seems to be the problem? Uh, well, um, I'm, I'm, I wrote my profile, mm -hmm. and I guess it's sent to you for, I guess, to make sure it's okay or presentable. And I checked it again. You have responded to me. Am um, I to happy you Thanksgiving with everybody? You responded to me, and I looked again, and I didn't see it. Yeah, no. Try, try it again now. And if you can't do it, just send me an email, uh, because I, I made some changes. But yeah, it was like that before. It sent me the sent me the prompt before, and I guess I didn't see yours. But um, I turned it on so that you could self enroll with the forum. Yeah. Now we're talking about the form. We're not talking about Moodle. We're talking about the yes, form. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the form. Yeah, and and second, I'm sorry. Ahead. Second ahead, part of the question. I think that you was asking um, if anybody was interested in volunteering, something like mm -hmm. that. Did you say that in, in one of your emails? Absolutely. Well, um, I don't want to uh, hold anybody else, but I'm kind of wondering uh, what capacity are you talking about? What are you, what are you needing to be done on a well, volunteer? Any, any, anything you know how to do for my if you, you <laughs> write, write web pages, if you can write PHP code, anything. And, you know, as you learn stuff, you'll be able to do more. So I'm not expecting people to have high-end skills now. But, um, yeah, I mean, I need help. I mean, tell, send me a list of what you know how to do, and we'll, we'll see if we can put you to work doing something. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I enjoyed it. it it's, it's been great. I'm very excited about it. I yeah, like I yeah, yeah. Hey, hey thanks, ma'am. Um, let me know if you can't get on, on the portal. Okay, sure will. Yeah. Okay, um, thanks. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take up um, – um, I'll do kind of like a dual poll or something, um, put a poll on the um, bulletin board or something to see if we want to go for an hour and a half. Um, right now it's an hour. And if people, yeah. want a little more, if people want a little more time, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I don't want to, you know, because I know people are busy. So, right. and, and people try to, people try to be on for the, the, the duration of however long you say the session is. So if people don't have an hour and a half, then that's fine. We'll, 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 do, we'll do what we can do in an hour. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll I'll see you guys. I got I got to get back to work. I got to get back to work. I got other things. Yeah. Thank you. you got, hey, thanks everybody for your participation. Um, I'm excited about this. Thank you. I want everybody to, to get engaged. Let me know if you have any problems. Like the the, the lady had a problem getting on the uh, uh form, so let me know because I want you guys to get engaged. I want you to get active. Uh, we need to show the world that we're ready. We're ready for this money. We're ready for this. Hey, hey, hey. We, 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 we need hey, to, hey, but, 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 but they're not. But, but understand now, 
they're not just going to give it to you because they got nothing better to do. Ain't nobody trying to help y'all, right? Ain't nobody trying to look out for anybody. Ain't nobody doing favors. They are going to hire you because it's in their business interest to give you a job to help them make more money. That's right. it. Bottom line, this is business. This is business. It's business. So you got to be serious about it. It, it pays good money, but it's serious work. I enjoy it. I wouldn't want to do anything else for a living. And my students wouldn't want to do anything else for a living. And I, I just saw uh, on Facebook, was, uh, one of my students, she's been out of school two years, she bought herself a house. She was 24 years old. Bought herself a house. Nice house. Big house. Right? Big house. And um, she's not mainframe. I think she's a project manager somewhere. And, you know, all the money's not mainframe. There's good money in mainframe, but there's, there's good money to, uh, doing other things too. But that's what I'm saying. I'm seeing my students give themselves a, a sense of, of liberation that I love to see from, from our community. I love to see that. I love to see when, when I, my student is 24 years old, she can go put 10 or $15,000 or whatever it is down on a house and they give her the keys. I love to see that. And that's what, that's what we need to be about. But it's serious, serious. Not gonna come to you. Not gonna come to you. That I promise you, you're gonna, you're gonna earn it. And when you get these jobs, you know, the students are, are always coming to me, uh, well, I'm not saying always, often come to me after the fact saying they didn't realize they were going to have to work that hard. Well, why do you think they're going to pay you $90,000 a year? Because <laughs> <laughs> what, you can sit there and watch YouTube all day? Or Facebook? Right, right. The world don't work that way. You have to produce. But they, but it's enjoyable work. It's enjoyable work. Okay, y'all. I ramble on enough. Um, I really thank you for your participation. It's a a honor to be to serve you this way. And uh, I, I'm, I'm being blessed for it. So you guys be well until next week. I'll be in touch and, and go get on the bulletin board. I'm going to put stuff on the bulletin board. I may send out a few more emails, but after that, no more emails. Everything's going to be on the bulletin board. I'll give everybody a chance to get on. Bye. Uh, appreciate it.